Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Zinc extraction can be done by many processes. Out of them, we are going to discuss the most economical ones. We are going to start with the pyrometallurgy rule. Here we have two different processes, horizontal retort and vertical retort process. Followed by the electrolyte. This is acid electrolysis. This is the most versatile process as of now. Then we are going to discuss the most beautiful process out of all these, imperial smelting. Here at the same time, we can get lead and zinc without spending any more money. So this is the most economical process. The pyrometallurgy route contributes to 25% of total extraction of zinc and the acid electrolysis contributes to almost 60% and imperial smelting is around 12%. Friends, this is 12% of zinc as well as 10 to 12% of lead as well. First step involves differential flotation of mixture of all sulphides which gives us zinc rich concentrate ZNS. We go for roasting to convert sulphide into oxide because oxides are more reducible than sulphides. The obtained ZNO is again crushed and then agglomerated and sintered at 1200 degrees centigrade. Now we got our main raw material ZNO agglomerate. Friends, horizontal retort process has started in 1800s. So the modification of this process is vertical retort process. So let's look at horizontal retort process. It is a very small 2 meter long and 25 centimeter diameter in thickness of 5 to 6 centimeters. And this retort is made of clay. Friends, here we don't make any metallic retort because zinc forms alloys with almost many metals when heated. So we stick to clay. This is the initial adaptation. Here we <coughs> raw material jet and agglomerate and coke. Both are introduced and at 40 degrees centigrade, zinc volatilization takes place. The main reactions are ZNO reacts with carbon monoxide giving zinc and carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is being consumed by carbon and forming 2CO. This is similar to the Bordeaux reaction in our iron making glass furnace because at 1400 degrees centigrade carbon monoxide is more stable. But here we often face the problem zinc is also gas, carbon dioxide is also gas. So we don't want any reverse reaction, right? Because both are gases, we need to separate them by cooling. But to avoid the any possible reverse reaction, we maintain carbon monoxide partial pressure at a higher level, which means this reaction is proceeding at a faster rate, which means whenever carbon dioxide is produced, it is being consumed by coke to form carbon monoxide so that there is no sufficient availability of carbon dioxide to favor any reverse reaction. Friends, horizontal retort gives us a production of 50 kg per day, but some improvements are made and around 1930, the vertical retort process has been commercially adopted. This gives us much higher production of zinc 7 to 10 tons per day. And the major modification is here, it is made up of silicon carbide. Horizontal retort is made up of clay and here silicon carbide has high thermal conductivity. Almost 5 times that of clay. The size of the vertical retort is also far greater. It is 10 meter height, 0.7 meter diameter and 30 centimeter thick. Hence its production is far greater than that of the horizontal retort process. The product of these two processes, we call it spelter. It consists of mostly zinc and other elements as well. This spelter on melting produces three different layers depending on the density. The top layer is zinc with 0.8% is lead, is taken and again refined to get pure zinc. Fractional distillation separates zinc and lead. Friends, we know zinc is used for the cathodic production of iron. Out of 100%, 60% of zinc is purely used for the galvanizing of iron. What is galvanizing, friends? This is the process of formation of zinc carbonate layer on iron sulphide, iron surface. This layer is basic and inert, protects iron from the corrosive atmospheres. Let's look at another process, friends. Zinc oxide, which we got from roasting, is dissolved in acid. We call this process acid leaching, ZNO plus H2SO4. And here, through acid leaching, we precipitate all valuable products. Then, we purify this ZNO H2SO4 solution. We remove all possible elements. Cadmium, lead, copper, iron, arsenic, germanium. We remove all these before electrolysis. Friends, for copper electrolysis, we know we recover byproducts after electrolysis. But here we have to do this before electrolysis. There is a strong reason behind this, friends. During electrolysis, after deposition of zinc, if any of these elements are present, the deposition of these elements from the solution takes place at the cost of dissolving zinc, which we precipitated, which got deposited on the cathode. This process we call cementation. This occurs because of more electropositive nature of zinc. So now the dissolution of zinc takes place at the same time deposition of any of these metals takes place. This contaminates the zinc that deposited on the cathode. This process was started after the discovery of electricity and this gives us 99.95% .95 pure zinc. 
even though we do not need such high pure zinc for galvanizing or other purposes we are compelled to produce such a pure zinc because presence of any of these elements is not at all tolerated as they contaminate our metal so through electrolytic cell method we produce the most purest form of zinc which is 99.9 percent .9 is pure during electrolysis lead silver anode is used and aluminium cathode is used friends now let's look at imperial smelting friends this process does not require the differential flotation method that we do to separate lead sulfide and zinc sulfide here directly the complex mixture ores of lead and zinc are roasted and they become our raw material for our blast furnace here our raw material is zinc oxide and lead oxide mixture after sintering, the mixture of ZN1 PBO is introduced along with a flux and coke. So the reactions occurring inside the blast furnace through tears, vapors, oxygen and raw materials. The burden is coming from just like iron blast furnace. So the reactions inside the blast furnace are carbon producing carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and lead oxide. This is a reduction of with carbon monoxide. We are getting lead which is liquid and zinc which is gas. So since lead is liquid, we collect through the tap hole and zinc as a vapor, it turns along with the furnace gases at 1000 degrees centigrade and the composition of furnace gases is 6% is zinc along with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Now, here is the interesting step friends, to separate zinc which is vapor along with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. To take off the zinc, what we do is the lead, we collect it through the tap hole, we take it and we splash this liquid lead to the furnace gases. So, since zinc and lead form solid solution, this zinc liquid it absorbs all the zinc vapor which is present in the furnace gases. So, this is the reaction friends. Our furnace gases which is at 1000 degrees centigrade reacts or we can say forms a solid solution. Lead is taking zinc into the solution. Lead is at 450 degrees centigrade. It absorbs and forms lead zinc alloy. Its temperature is also increased to 550 degrees centigrade. Friends, if you look at lead zinc phase diagram, you understand this very well. If we cool it to 450 degrees centigrade, according to the phase diagram, the two phases that exist there are pure zinc and a lead with a limited solubility of zinc. So these two layers form because of their densities. We get almost pure zinc layer and another zinc layer with little zinc. So this layer is being separated and then this is again recirculated to the furnace gases. So this process is being repeated. So here we are getting at the same time zinc and lead with no extra cost. Friends, through this process, we are producing almost 10% of total production of lead and almost 12% of total production of zinc. So, this process is extremely important for the complex mixture of ores when we have zinc sulfide and lead sulfide together. We roast them and we agglomerate them, sintering. Why sintering? To avoid channeling in the blast furnace. So, after that, we input into the blast furnace. So, this is the complete process. I hope you understood the process, friends. If you have any doubts, you can join our Metallurgy Crisp Telegram group. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Take care.